They let me pick. Did I ever tell you that? Choose whichever Spartan I wanted. You know me. I did my research. Watched as you became the soldier we needed you to be. Like the others, you were strong and swift and brave. A natural leader. But you had something they didn't. Something no one saw but me. Can you guess? Luck. Ah, Halo 3! We're already four games into these Halo reviews and the bangers just keep coming! Halo 3 has the perfect ending for this trilogy, especially after the amazing start of Halo CE and the perfect sequel of Halo 2. Let's find out how it did. So right off the bat, that intro. I mean, to be honest, I have no clue what my favorite intro is out of all the games, but this intro has one of my favorite moments. Before we come to that though, let's talk about the start. So Master Chief, directly following the events uh, from Halo 2, jumped from the Forerunner ship and well, crash landed on Earth. We got, of course, our boy Johnson there to see how Master Chief is doing and hell no! He does not need no heavy lift gear. When the Chief got up, he saw a camouflaged elite and did not hesitate to jump right on it and put a gun to its neck. And this is my favorite scene right here. The moment when Chief puts the gun under Arbiter's neck, the music really kicks in and that still gives me the chills, man. That's just an epic gamer moment right there. Wait! The Arbiter's with us! Come on now. Got enough to worry about without you two trying to kill each other. Were it so easy? Throughout the whole game, the relationship between Arbiter and Chief is just fantastic, in my opinion. They don't talk a lot, but you just know they understand each other. I love the dynamic between them. Well, now that we're talking about the story already a little bit, uh, let's get into that first. So Halo 3's story packs a lot of content uh, in it like usual. There's no moment where you're like, okay, what exactly am I doing right now? No, you have always a goal. A fantastic moment, in my opinion, is when you are going to stop Truth from activating all the rings. Uh, you briefly team up with the Flood. They're like, yo, ho, dude, we want the same thing. Let's do this together. But the moment that Truth dies, uh, they turn on you again. A bit similar when like the UNSC and the Covenant are going to work together. Johnson picking up the Covenant weapons and Arbiter picking up human weapons. You can feel the tension, but neither Arbiter or badass Johnson give a damn about that. Setting your differences aside to achieve the same goal. I mean, saving Cortana, the boss fight with Guilty Spark and killing the Flood. The Halo 3 was a journey. Of course we lost a lot of friends in the fight, especially Johnson. Rest in peace! But we'll make sure he goes out with a bang. By activating the Ark, escaping with Arbiter on the back of our War Dog and killing the Flood for good. This is what I call finishing the fight. While writing this review I was wondering, what did people dislike about this game? I couldn't really think about something like in Halo 2, so I decided to check some reviews. The things I saw most was about story and or dialogue, but I could not really agree with that. I mean, compared to Halo CE or Halo 2, Halo 3 maybe lacks in some ways, but that's the problem when you make two amazing games already. When people don't like a few lines of, of, of dialogue or, or a few parts of the story, that's the thing they pick up on. If Halo CE and Halo 2 story was a straight 10, I would give uh, Halo 3 a 9. So technically, yes, it's not as good, but it's definitely an amazing story. Now let's talk about gameplay and design. So my complaint about Halo 2 were the linear levels. Well, Halo 3 takes level design back to Halo CE. Big giant areas to fight in and a much more open feeling playing field. They did a great job with level design. You also get a lot of like little cutscenes while playing, but you're still in game, which makes you really feel like you're part of this. It doesn't pull you out uh, to show you something. And I can really appreciate that. Dual wielding is back as well. Still, I did not use it too much, just like in Halo 2, but I still like that they give you the option to experiment with that. Next to that, something I experimented with way too little again, were like the power-ups. Um, there are so many things you can use, and during my first playthrough, it looked like I just forgot they were there. 
We have the same enemies like we had before, but one thing I want to add is that the Brutes make a return, but they are not the bullet sponges like they were in Halo 2. Their shield also doesn't regenerate when uh, you break it. The Flood also comes at you in greater numbers, but they are very satisfying to kill. Oh, and very very briefly, I, f I completely forgot, this is me from the future, but I forgot to talk about the music. Uh, very short. I would probably say this is my favorite music in the whole series. I actually don't have anything to add to that. It's just very good. To be honest, for me, Halo 3 was the perfect ending for this amazing trilogy. Escaping with Arbiter with a Warthog run just like in Halo CE was amazing. The more fleshed out relationship between Master Chief and Cortana was better than I imagined it would be. And the emotional moment to honor our fallen soldiers couldn't have been more beautiful. For us, the storm has passed, the war is over, but let us never forget those who journeyed into the howling dark and did not return. For their decision required courage beyond measure, sacrifice and unshakable conviction that their fight, our fight, was healthy. As we start to rebuild, this hillside will remain barren, a memorial to heroes fall. They ennobled all of us, and they shall not be forgotten.